So, John, uh, I feel like we need to have a bit of a debate here. I have a certain setup for console war debates where I go on this wheeldecide.com website where you can put in a bunch of choices, spin a wheel, and it'll pick something for you. Um, but I don't want to do any basic little console wars thing like a Super Nintendo versus Sega Genesis 360 versus PS3. Those are like the iconic ones throughout history. Snooze crews. Yeah. I don't care about those. What we did is that we made a wheel full of uh, about 10 or so random consoles. Some are actual consoles. Some are just, you know, things like... <laughs> <laughs> Things like uh, the Wii <laughs> and whatnot. Or some of you are even accessories because you can maybe consider those to be platforms. Something like the Kinect for Xbox One because there are exclusive games for it. Uh, and uh, the DK Bongos for GameCube was your suggestion. But yeah, so pretty much I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin this wheel. And uh, I'll, I'll spin it for me and I'll spin it for you. And pretty much uh, whatever it lands on for me, I have to defend. And whatever it lands on for you, you have to defend. And then maybe afterwards we'll, we'll reveal to each other maybe actually what we'd pick. You know, it doesn't matter. You, you can't tell me, like, if, if I get Vectrex and you get Master System and you actually prefer the Vectrex, you can't tell me if you do or not. You have to defend your Master System Till, till the end of time, or at least the end of this 20 minute or so yeah. debate. I'm committed to the cause. I won't chicken out. Exactly. Thank you. So, uh, I will spin. I'll spin for me, and then I'll spin for you. All right, I got Master System. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> All right. okay, okay. That's that's a decent one. Let's hope you get something like PlayStation 2. <laughs> let's see if, uh, let's see. This is for John. Oh, I'm so scared. What am I getting? Ah, Nintendo 64 oh. versus the Sega Master System. Okay, I iconic lineup. Yeah. Do you want to start here with your with your opening statements? I guess. Sure. Or, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, go ahead. You have to defend the Nintendo 64. So Nintendo 64 was a revolutionary system. The push to 3D. Many franchises making their transition for the first time, like Mario and Zelda and uh, Pokemon and so many others. Kirby kind of in 2D. 2.5D. But what made the N64 very interesting is many games are exclusive to that platform. They're made specifically for it. Uh, there was an entirely new design approach, but there was no like, oh, this could be a Super Nintendo game, because it was it was a different time. Whereas stuff like Master System, I think uh, many of its games are derived from Genesis. Like, uh, even though it came before, it sort of lived in that time span as well. So we got stuff like Sonic and Shinobi, which, um, or, or like Golden Axe, which are kind of like downgraded for Master System. Whereas N64 didn't have that at all, because all these games were made specifically for that console. Uh, we had fast loading times with cartridges, we don't need discs, and so you can just jump into a painting in Mario 64, and you're in the level. Revolutionary stuff. Four player ports on the console as standard, no need for a multi-tap. You can play Smash Brothers or Mario Party or Mario Kart or GoldenEye. All these multiplayer classics that people still play today because of how fun they are. N64 truly was one of the most social systems of its time and uh, games just couldn't have existed anywhere else because it was, um, it was the time for 3D and it's still a great console today. All right, well, uh, I'm gonna absolutely, <laughs> I'm gonna absolutely <laughs> wipe the floor with uh, your statement here, <laughs> with the Sega Master System. A console that is still going on to this very day, technically, in Brazil, because the Sega Master System is pretty cheap over there. Brazil has had uh, various problems with uh, console pricing. Uh, it's very expensive to get anything like a, like a PS4 or PS5 there. Uh, like it's thousands and thousands uh, where the Sega Master System Sega was able to uh, get a get a good deal with a company called Tech Toy and uh, yeah, They're able to pump them out there pretty easily And it's one of the most popular consoles there because of it not just because it's cheap as dirt But also because it has a wonderful lineup of games and great accessories too. the Sega scope 3d glasses uh, the, the the light phaser I don't see that on Nintendo 64 Point made. There's also loads of Sonic games on there. Um, Sonic games that are from the Game Gear, mostly, uh, or at least like they were then ported to the Game Gear. But you got things like Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic Chaos, Sonic Blast, uh, not Sonic Triple Trouble, unfortunately, but you had Sonic Spinball. And Master System was a really cool place for uh, just some kind of uh, D makes of Genesis games. Uh, or D makes of just games in general. You got Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat on there. There's so many just random weird ports 
on the Sega Master System that I find very intriguing. It's almost kind of like the uh, middle ground between an NES and a Genesis. And I think that's what's really compelling about it. You get stuff like Double Dragon and Ninja Gaiden on there, which are kind of pretty different on the Sega Master System. Uh, in addition, you can play your Sega Master System games on the Genesis, which does show that Sega did show uh, that the Master System did have uh, some worth uh, to continue supporting it via the Sega Genesis uh, with the power base converter. Um, you got uh, some <laughs> Sega games <laughs> that... Uh, Man, I kind of fell out of steam there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you pulled the Brazil card too early. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the, some games are on cards on the Master System. Oh, no, I should have given that to you. Oh, man. That, sh that yeah. was pretty cool. Um, the Master System is really neat, in my opinion. This is me talking from the heart, not necessarily trying to win an argument here. I think the Master System is really neat to look back on. It is something where it feels like kind of this weird alternate history kind of thing where it's just like oh this was this was sega uh during the nes era before the genesis where they were trying to compete with the nes but they just they couldn't really do it properly like nothing on the master system is ever really exciting but it's really charming i think i think that's kind of what i get from the master system the sonic titles on there uh they're they're obviously not as good as, as what you'd get from Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles on the Genesis. But I do think they're quite charming. And I think it's really fun to kind of look back and uh, just experience what Sega was like before the Genesis because so much of Sega's history is pretty much Genesis. And that's kind of it. Whenever there, there's like a reference to something Sega related, it's almost always just Genesis Mega Drive stuff. Uh, you know, they, they barely even mention Saturn or Dreamcast sometimes. Uh, where Master System is like this really wacky era of Sega that, uh, that I think is really cool. Uh, can we do something where we do a new debate every five minutes? I cannot do this much longer for Master yeah, System. Yeah, let's do it. Let's just let's spin <laughs> yeah. the wheel again. I can't. I don't know who won that one. I, I feel can't like you, do you, it. You had, you had a bunch of good points in there. Yeah. You didn't mention, um, that it only has eight bits though. We're 64 or 64 bits. Um, you didn't mention Rumble Pack, which only N64 has. Uh, no yeah, the master, system. the master System does not have Rumble. The Master System does not have an analog stick, unfortunately. No. I <laughs> I couldn't do much. Uh, keep keep going for a second because uh, I accidentally clicked out of WheelDecide.com, so I'm going to have to quickly oh, no. throw these things back in. Okay, but the thing, too, like Master System, um, I think a lot of its games, they had, had its pros, like Fantasy Star was a cool exclusive game on that console. Um, a lot of the downports, though, they're charming. I think it's cool seeing stuff like uh, Altered Beast in 8-bit. But Altered Beast on Master System runs atrociously bad. <laughs> like, uh, and also, uh, many of the games only came out in Europe. You can't trust people in Europe. Oh, you should, yeah, you should know. <laughs> what are, what are yeah. your neighbors like? <laughs> Have you ever oh, met you your neighbors? Them. Yeah, don't even want to even look at them. them. I wouldn't. I wouldn't look at them in the eyes though. Yeah. You can't trust them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have we have we have a brand new wheel here. Alright, I'm screwed. Oh. Okay, I got Pokemon Mini. And uh you have uh, Game Gear. <laughs> Alright, okay, okay. All right. Game Gear. <laughs> Alright, alright. Okay, so Pokemon Mini versus Game Gear. Since you started last time, I'll start this time. Alright. Pokemon Mini was a very interesting experiment by Nintendo. It was a great little combination of a Tamagotchi and a Game Boy. And uh, the tech behind this thing is wild. You have an infrared sensor, uh, maybe. Uh, you have a rumble motor. You have a motion sensor. In 2000, 2001, that's pretty wild. Uh, and the fact that this game system is so small and has interchangeable cartridges and you can play games like Pokemon Tetris, Pokemon Party, Pokemon Pinball, it's pretty wild. I think it's pretty damn cool. Uh, the screen is very nice on it, even though it's just a simple little uh, little LED, well, not even an LED. I don't even know, just, just pretty much like no color screen, no backlight. Uh, it's just pretty much using like calculator technology, I guess. Uh, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, and uh, it, it, it's very clear. It's something where I can imagine for any Pokemaniac out there, it's pretty cool. And you can play your little Pokemon mini games on the go. You can experience Pokemon fun in the palm of your hand. Uh, there's more games than you may expect for it, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, you, like I said, you have Pokemon Tetris, you have puzzle games, pinball games, party games, all that kind of stuff. The Pokemon Mini 
is one of Nintendo's crowning achievements uh, in the handheld space. Uh, and uh, go on and debate and uh, defend your silly little stupid Sega handheld. Well, you said it yourself. Basically a calculator, the Pokemon Mini. Doesn't have a backlit screen, which the Game Gear does. Full color backlit. You're surpassing the Game Boy. You've got this this beautiful screen. Doesn't blur at all. I, I don't trust anyone who says it does. It's stunning. You can play Sonic um, in any time of day, in the dark if you want to. You can see that beautiful blue boy in crystal clear quality. You've got two buttons. You've got a D-pad. And you can play console quality games on the go. Stuff that the Master System has, you can play on a, cons uh, on a handheld. You can play it in the car. You can play Columns. You can play... Sonic 1 and 2 and has triple trouble, which the Master System didn't. And there's also stuff like, there's Japan exclusive games like uh, Panzer Dragoon uh, Jr., I think it's called. And you've also got like, Natsu, Poyo, and so many other classics for the Game Gear. Uh, and it, it truly spits in the face of the Pokemon Mini um, with its sheer library. You've got so many games that you can play. Uh, you can plug it into the wall. Some people say that the battery life goes too quickly. Those people can't afford plug sockets. You can just plug it in and play whenever you want to. Um, I think the Game Gear is something that we should all take with us every day. And uh, if you want to, you can use it like a brick. And if someone's attacking you, you can use your Game Gear to defend yourself. Pokemon Mini, you couldn't, you couldn't get anywhere with that thing. Uh, and so for that reason, I think Game Gear is truly the pioneer of this era. Uh, while Game Gear may be a good uh, uh, offensive tool, I feel like Pokemon Mini <laughs> is a good defensive tool. I feel like it is a choking <laughs> hazard to the point where you could swallow one in the face of a burglar and they would be scared <laughs> by you. Seeing an immediate reaction like that, uh, you choking on a Pokemon Mini is scary enough to be like, I don't want to screw with this guy, I'm out of here. Uh, Pokemon Mini has nothing but exclusive games. There's nothing but exclusives on there. No other way to play them outside of like uh, some emulation uh, work that a lot of cool fans have been able to do. But overall, uh, for the pure experience, uh, you have to own a Pokemon Mini and uh, Whooper's Big Adventure or something. What? Nah, uh, Egg... The egg thing, uh, whatever it is, Tokapi's, yeah, <laughs> Tokapi's Grand Adventure, that's a Pokemon <laughs> mini game, uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, Game Gear is pretty much consisting of nothing but ports or multi-platform games, and there are superior ways to play them, in my opinion, on places like the Sega Master System, where you can play a lot of the Game Gear's biggest titles on that system, no problem, with a better uh, resolution, uh, better uh, better field of view. Uh, Game Gear may have better colors, I think. Maybe. But you can't even see them. I tried playing a Game Gear recently. You can't see them. I may have been being up the screen a bit much over there, but the refresh rate <laughs> is a big thing as well, though, because many Master System games only came out in Europe. And on those, they were 50 hertz. Whereas Game Gear, they're full speed 60 You and your 50 so hertz, hertz listen. System, listen, I understand. You <laughs> have to suffer for years over there. But still, I don't know anything about 50 hertz with my Pokemon Mini. You know, uh, at the end of this debate, I'm not really sure which one I would prefer. I don't have much passion for the Game Gear. I don't either. <laughs> it's okay. It's, I like the Game Gear. Um, Pokemon Mini has, has Tetris. I like the Game Gear in the sense of, like, I like a lot of obscure consoles even though it's not super obscure but still like i like the game gear in the sense that i like the atari 7800 where i'm just like yeah that's mm. kind of cool isn't it <laughs> and I, I don't play it but i'm just like yeah that's kind of neat <laughs> it was cool for its time by like having yeah. that much power on a console i mean you need like six double a batteries but it was still cool hey i mean it does it does the job i think it was a uh fine fine competitor for the game boy at the time as in it did a lot of stuff that it didn't do but it was also like it it didn't. It didn't do a good job of uh, <laughs> competing at the same time because uh, the Game Boy was absolutely superior, which was weird because in almost every way on paper it was inferior. I mean, let's face it. The, the Game Gear was no Atari Lynx. No, no, no. Oh man, we should have put the Atari Lynx on here. Oh. Yeah. Name man. an Atari Lynx game. Batman Returns. Damn it. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I think there's one called Scrap Your Dog. <laughs> So I was, I was going to say that one. Uh, but uh, all right. I think we have time for one more in this session here. Right. Uh, let's see. We better get some. We better get a good one here. Boom. This is for me. Ah, uh, the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Ooh. That's a strong one. I have been stuck with nothing but 
stupid little handhelds or things that are pretty much <laughs> stupid little handhelds that you plug into the TV with the Master System. This is going to be rough. Uh, I really hope you get something like a... I'm really hoping some bongos, DK bongos or something. Well, we both get Neo Geo Pocket Color. Oh, Atari 5200. I know so little about the 5200. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm ready. <laughs> you, I, you, I, I will allow you to look it up on on like a, on a quick website. Just glance at it every now and then, because hey, that okay. is that I, I did that with Master System. I knew I know I know a decent amount about the Master System, but I. I, I found out I knew pretty much everything there is to know because I didn't get much from that website. Uh, so, the Neo Geo Pocket Color is, in my opinion, one of the coolest little handhelds, uh, one of the coolest little novelties. Uh, it's something where when you play a Neo Geo Pocket Color, it is so much more different than a lot of other handhelds at the time or even nowadays with its clicky little stick. That is the main thing about it. Uh, its stick is a multi-directional stick. It is no D-pad, it is no thumbstick. It is a clicky little arcade stick that's like rubberized and it feels so cool. I really like how it feels. In terms of games, you have some of the coolest fighting games uh, for a handheld at the time. And even for a handheld, these fighting games are like really well done. They really utilize just the two button layout uh, masterfully, which is insane. Uh, but outside of fighting games, you may think the Neo Geo Pocket Color has a bit of a limited library but it has variety in that small number. You have games like, notoriously, Sonic the Hedgehog Pocket Adventure, which is a fantastic 2D Sonic game. It is a great little, like, Sonic 2 kind of remix, I guess, where it's pretty much a lot of Sonic 2 levels with uh, Sonic 3 music and uh, randomly, like, the Sonic Adventure design for Sonic. Like, he has green eyes in this game. The box art shows, uh, and the title screen shows Sonic Adventure Sonic. Uh, but then you also have stuff like uh, Metal Slug First Mission, which is uh, really, really high quality. You also have a lot of cool stuff like uh, Capcom vs. SNK. You have a, a, a card battling game featuring them where you have two vari variations, where you have an SNK side and a Capcom side you can play. You have Neo Turf Masters, which is one of the best golf games ever created, uh, but now in a handheld form. Uh, and you also have Pac-Man on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. It's just Pac-Man, but it works fine enough. Uh, yeah, overall, the Neo Geo Pocket Color is a really cool little handheld. I always really enjoyed it from a novelty perspective, but even outside of the novelty perspective, I think it's a genuinely really solid little uh, short-lived handheld that had a lot of cool support from SNK, but also some support from their friends as well with Sega and Capcom. I really enjoy it and I think it's a good time. Also, the screen on it is surprisingly good for a non-backlit display. That's pretty cool. All right, what do you have to say about the Atari 5200 in comparison? Well, I struggle to disparage the uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color because it is a cool little system, but as you said, no backlit, no backlight display, whereas with a Atari 5200, depending on the TV you've got, you can have any display you want. You can have an OLED attached to this thing. You can have a CRT if you want. You can have any display and it can look crystal clear if you've got the setup. Now, the Atari 5200, I think, has gone down in history as the doubler. So, when people were talking about the successor to the Xbox 360, many of the code names were like, oh, Xbox 720. And that came from Atari, because they doubled 2600 and they got 5200. And that's gone down in history as the doubler. And I think what this system really achieves is sh sheer graphical fidelity. The 2600, looking back at a lot of those games, it's just little men walking around. Whereas the, the 5200 really reached a point where I think graphics plateaued. We haven't really got better than this today. Um, 50 <laughs> it's, it really does just look great even today. Um, there's lots of great games on this system. Uh, you've got stuff like Cubert, you've got Donkey Kong, and I hear you, yeah, those are on other systems, but none of them look quite like they do on 5200. Whereas many games on systems today, they look they look identical to their, their previous ports, but these, uh, you look at them and you know, you know they belong on the 5200. Um, there are many exclusive games, uh, and the 2600 was a pretty good controller. I mean, it's just one single button and a, and a joystick. There's only so much you can achieve with that, and I think they took the brilliant intuition to give you a phone pad, because phones have many different buttons on them, uh, more than one, uh, so you can use many different buttons for many different inputs, and complexity 
really is the breather of innovation. The more stuff you have, the more you can do. That's what I always say. Um, the console looks stunning. It's huge. It's, uh, it, it, if you were to put this alongside a TV, it may even be bigger than it, um, which just speaks to the power. If people come to your house, they'll see this thing and they'll think of you as powerful. Um, and all in all, the 5200, it really is just one of the systems of our era, of our time. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, I just like, that's all, all I gotta say. I just like the idea you know, it's say more? stunning, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really big. <laughs> it's a conversation piece. I will give you this, the new Geo Pocket Color does not have a 7 button. I will give you that. We do have an A key though. And a B key and an option. And I did look it up. Um, it says on this website that the Neo Geo Pocket Color does not. This this person writes, I wish it hasn't had an easy TV out option though. But you know what that means? There might be a TV out option. It may not be easy, <laughs> but you could maybe one, mod man. it. <laughs> so, <laughs> nah. so the whole you could plug it into a TV. That that. That argument's moot. That was uh, my point. Yeah. yeah. Um, in, in in retaliation, I will just uh, respond with. Ah, uh, I, I give up. <laughs> I give up. I've got you beat there. You had Cubert. <laughs> Cubert. <laughs> <laughs>